Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS, presenting to you the daily quiz for 10th of August 2022. But before we begin, let me remind you to make the best use of all our initiatives carefully curated to help you with your UPSC journey. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and click on the bell icon to stay notified about all our initiatives. Do let us know if you are liking our initiatives by liking and commenting on our videos. Now let us begin and take a look at the first question for today. The participation of women in the Quit India movement of 1942 was significant from several aspects. Who among the following participated in the Quit India movement? Number 1. Usha Mehta Number 2. Matangini Hazara Number 3. Sucheta Kriplani Number 4. Rajkumari Amrit Kaur What is the context? This article in the PIB today talks about the Quit India movement and hence we've taken up this question for discussion. On the 8th of August 1942, the Quit India resolution was passed. On the 80th anniversary of the launch of Quit India movement, which was a massive anti-imperialist struggle, let us discuss about the contribution of women who fought in the freedom struggle by participating in the Quit India movement. During this movement, with the majority of men behind the bars, women took to the streets by raising slogans, holding lectures as well as demonstrations and also participated in making and transporting explosives. Let us learn more as we discuss the question. But before we discuss the answer, pause the video, mark your answers and let us know how many you could get right. Now coming to option number 1, Usha Mehta. Usha Mehta was one of the prominent workers of the Congress radio conspiracy case. She helped set up an underground radio station which led to the awakening about the movement. She set up a radio transmitter called the Voice of Freedom to disseminate information about Gandhiji's famous do or die message for the Quit India movement. And therefore this message was circulated among the masses. So number 1 is correct. In the year 1942, at the age of 73, Matangini Hazara led a procession of 6,000 people, mostly women, to ransack a local police station. She was often referred to as Gandhi Buri or Old Lady Gandhi. She is a perfect example of the involvement of rural folk in the nationalist struggle of 1942 or the Quit India movement. So number 2 is also correct. Coming to Sucheta Kriplani. Sucheta Kriplani is also known for her most active participation in the Quit India movement. Also remember that before the inception of Quit India movement, Sucheta Kriplani founded the Women's Department of Indian National Congress in 1940. So 3 also becomes correct. Now coming to Rajkumari Amrit Kaur who belonged to the royal family of Kapurthala state. She came under the influence of Gandhiji and became one of his followers. She participated in Salt Satyagraha as well as the Quit India movement. So number 4 is also correct. Other women like Nandini Devi from Odisha and also Shashibala Devi are the names that are associated with the Quit India movement. Another woman popularly known as Grand Old Lady of the Independence Movement is known for hoisting the Indian flag at the Gwalia Tank Maidan in Mumbai during the Quit India Movement. Let me know in the comment section who is being referred to here. That is, the woman who was popularly known as Grand Old Lady of the Independence Movement. Do drop your answers in the comment section. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, all of the above. Moving on to question number 2. Which of the given statements is or are correct? Number 1. The most recent chess olympiad was hosted in India for the first time and saw the largest participation in any chess olympiad. Number 2. International Chess Federation or FIDE is recognized as a global sporting organization by the International Olympic Committee. Number 3. Indian women's team won the country's first ever medal in the women's section in the recent chess olympiad. Choose the correct option. First up, let us take a look at the context. The 44th chess olympiad was held in India in 2022. Since there is a mention of this in today's The Hindu newspaper Delhi edition, we have taken up this question for discussion. Now let us go back to the question. The most recent chess olympiad, which is the 44th chess olympiad, was hosted in India for the first time. 
right? Also, with 189 countries participating in this, this was the largest ever participation seen in any chess Olympiad. So, statement number one becomes correct. Other important points to remember are, this prestigious competition has been organized since 1927. But this is being hosted in India for the first time and in Asia after three decades, that is after 30 years. Also, the first ever torch relay of the chess Olympiad also started from this time, right? Coming to statement number two. The International Chess Federation is the governing body of the sport of chess and this regulates all the international chess competitions. This was constituted as a non-governmental institution and in the year 1999, it was recognized by the International Olympic Committee as the global sporting organization. So, statement number two is also correct. At this stage, you can eliminate options A and option D. Coming to statement number three. On the 9th of August, the Indian women's team scripted history at the 44th Chess Olympiad by winning India's first ever medal in the women's section. Therefore, statement number 3 is correct and the right answer to our question would be option C, all the three statements. Moving on to question number 3. Consider the following statements with respect to Nisar. The mission will observe Earth and measure its changing ecosystem and masses globally. Number two, it will use both L-band and S-band radar frequencies. The S-band radar is being built by ISRO and L-band radar is being built by NASA. Number three, its primary goals include spotting warning signs of imminent volcanic eruptions, helping to monitor groundwater supplies, tracking the rate at which ice sheets are melting, etc. Which of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? This PIB article today that talks about bilateral collaboration between India and the US has a reference to NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar Satellite. This NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar Satellite or NASAR is expected to be launched in the year 2023, right? Please note that NASAR is the world's most expensive earth imaging satellite and it is a combined US and India satellite. This is a dual frequency radar imaging satellite. Why dual frequency? Because it will use both L band as well as S band radar frequencies, right? So NISAR will be the first satellite mission to use two different radar frequencies being L band and S band to measure the changes in Earth's surface less than a centimeter across. So statement number one here would be correct. The mission will observe Earth and measure its changing ecosystem as well as masses globally. NASA is providing the mission's L-band synthetic aperture radar. It is also providing GPS receivers and a solid state recorder and payload data subsystem. While ISRO is providing the spacecraft bus, the S-band radar and the launch vehicle as well as associated launch services. Therefore, statement number two is also correct. Now coming to the objectives of NASAR. The main objective of NISAR is to make global measurements of the causes and consequences of land surface changes. And this includes monitoring imbalances in the ecosystem, natural hazards, monitoring groundwater supplies, soil moisture estimation, ice sheet collapses, etc. Therefore, statement number three is also correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3. Now let us take up question number 4. Bansera and Bhash Gram are seen in the news with reference to Option A. Gene Sanctuaries Option B. Subsistence Agriculture Option C. Bamboo Option D. Below Sea Level Farming Systems What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today talks about Delhi's first bamboo themed park that would come up on the Yamuna floodplain. And this bamboo themed park is titled Bansera. This particular park will have about 25,000 varieties of bamboo saplings that were procured from Assam and planted in the park. Another important piece of information for us is that Tripura was the first state in India to house a bamboo park. Also, the first of its kind multi-purpose bamboo village or Bhashgram came up in the state of Tripura to boost ecotourism in the region. This bamboo village has been set up in western Tripura along the India-Bangladesh border. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option C, bamboo. Bansera and Bhashgram are related to bamboo. Now, let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2016. 
recognition of prior learning scheme or RPL scheme is sometimes mentioned in the news with reference to Option A. Certifying the skills acquired by construction workers through traditional channels. Option B. Enrolling the persons in universities for distance learning programs. Option C. Reserving some skilled jobs to rural and urban poor in some public sector undertakings. Option D. Certifying the skills acquired by trainees under the National Skill Development Program. C. Recognition of prior learning is a skill certification scheme. It was a scheme for the construction sector. So, construction workers were certified under this RPL, which was an assessment process of an individual by evaluating their existing skills, experience gained and providing certification for the same. So, statement A here would be the most suitable option. But please remember that in the year 2016, the government of India expanded this beyond the construction sector. So now, individuals with prior learning experience or skills can register themselves, get assist and certified under the recognition of prior learning component of the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today, which is National Mission on Interdisciplinary Cyber Physical Systems. What is the context? This article in the PIB today has a reference to the National Mission on Interdisciplinary Cyber Physical Systems and hence we have taken up this topic for discussion under fact of the day. First of all, what is cyber physical systems? Cyber physical system is an interdisciplinary field which deals with deployment of computer based systems that do things in the physical world. Hence, cyber physical systems. What does this mean? It integrates sensing, computation, control and networking into physical objects and infrastructure connecting them to the internet and to each other. For example, there are autocars, there are quadcopters, smart grids, robotic systems, industrial control systems and the most familiar to us smart lighting systems which is the lighting technology for smart homes that are connected to the internet. So these are new class of engineered systems that integrate computation and physical processes in a dynamic environment. We all have heard about artificial intelligence, internet of things, machine learning, deep learning, all of which are some of the associated technologies to cyber physical systems. Now coming to the national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems. The Department of Science and Technology is implementing National Mission on Interdisciplinary Cyber Physical Systems. This mission has an outlay of Rs 3660 crore for a period of 5 years to encourage innovation in the new age technologies. Right? And as a part of this mission implementation, 25 technology innovation hubs have been established in reputed institute across India in advanced technologies. These technology innovation hubs will create a strong foundation and an ecosystem for cyber physical systems. How? They will create a platform for policy makers, researchers, premier institutes, startups, investors as well as industries across the globe to connect. So now you may ask, how is this significant? We just spoke about smart lighting systems. We also know about driverless automobiles that interact safely with one another on the smart roadways. These are just a few examples of possible uses. Now if we think of other uses where cyber physical systems can be used, these can be used in sensors in the house to identify the changes in health problems. It can be used for better farming methods and also it can be used to allow scientists to address climate change challenges. Therefore, these cyber physical systems will offer competitive advantage to a nation. They will provide assistance to the government tasks and increase industrial as well as economic competence. Therefore, they will prove to be a genuinely evolved strategic resource. And also, a planned mission like this will help in the national efforts in health, education, energy, industry 4.0, smart cities and also sustainable development goals. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.